Hello, everybody. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, hi, I am your host today. Uh, I'm Snow Yunshu Fu. Uh, welcome to the rescheduled artist talk, uh, session one, actually, of the Metaverse exhibition at VRWS Park called Shen, uh, which is a Chinese word uh, for life, living, uh, birth, uh, lives. And I am uh, one of the curators uh, of this Metaverse show. Uh, my co-curator is uh, my digital daughter, uh, Daughter Ice, uh, and uh, which we will see in a little bit. Uh, but joining us, uh, we have a wonderful group of people today uh, who we will hear from. Uh, and uh, um, so uh, I want to uh, really quickly share the order of events uh, so that the audience know uh, what to expect. Uh, so we'll have a round of introduction uh, where everybody is going to introduce themselves a bit. Uh, and then uh, we will hear actually also from um, Sylvain, uh, who is the DSL Collection uh, founder, uh, and also uh, our special guest, Natasha Truk, uh, who is the lovely uh, exhibition essay writer. Uh, and then also our four stars, uh, artist stars of today. Uh, and uh, when they're introducing themselves, they're also going to talk about their artwork, um, and uh, including actually my mother, who's sitting next to me, <laughs> joining uh, from uh, China. And uh, uh, while we are having uh, the introductions uh, and then the artwork talks, we're actually also going to give a tour of the exhibition so that you will see it in the Web3 version. Um, and then we hope uh, if you're joining us live, uh, you can write down your comments or questions in the YouTube comment section. I will hope to have a little Q&A time in the end. I think Sylvan have some questions for the artists and uh, the speakers. Um, and if you have something we would like to uh, hear from your highlight, uh, your comment. Uh, let's get back to the talking head. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so I am uh, going to introduce myself real quick, uh, and then I'm going to call on everybody to introduce themselves, and you will hear uh, a bit uh, about how they're involved uh, in the show and you know what artwork they're also uh, showing. And so, uh, like I said, I'm Snow Yunshu Fu. Uh, I am a new media artist myself. Uh, so I also have artwork in the exhibition, um, as well as my mother and my grandmothers, uh, who are also, uh, you know, uh, Chinese female artists, <laughs> and also my digital human daughter, Daughter Ice. Uh, so four generations. Uh, uh, but expanding the kind of idea of family wider, I really do consider uh, uh, lots of people here today uh, are my art families um, and peers. Um, and uh, uh, so in a sense, it's a really um, family show, right? I think this idea of Shen um, comes down to, you know, sort of this, exist this existential kind of concept of what's living, right? So how do we understand that, especially in a hyper technological you know, lens uh, of the metaverse? Um, and uh, uh, I'm also a curator, so I've been working with Sylvain uh, Levy, Karen Levy, um, and everybody at the DSL collection uh, on this VRWS Park project for uh, now two years. So this is uh, our final artist talk of our uh, current and also newest exhibition, Shen. Uh, so that is a little bit about me. And uh, um, I want to actually have, uh, I have three assistants today, today joining me. Um, they've all involved in this project and other projects uh, in different extents. Uh, so uh, starting with Eugene, uh, could you introduce yourself a little bit and let, let us know where you're joining us from physically. Hi, um, my name is Eugene and I'm joining from South Korea and I am Snow's assistant. I do both um, mainly 3D animation. I help out with her 3D animation and I also do 2D animation. <laughs> yes, yes. Brings a wonderful, uh, lots of good skills uh, and great support. And today she's also supporting us by running the show. So thank you, Eugene. 
Um, and then Diego, please introduce yourself and tell us uh, where you're joining us from. Hello, I'm also an assistant uh, with Snow and I'm in Mexico City. I'm also a 3D designer and today I'm going to be helping navigate this space. Thank you so much, Diego. So uh, while physically he's in Mexico City, uh, virtually he is leading Dot Their Eyes, <laughs> which is our other co-curator. Um, and then um, Fei Fei, uh, who has been my intern for a semester, uh, a current student at SVA, please introduce yourself a little bit too. Hi, my name is Fei Fei Lai, and I'm currently in New York, and I'm Snow's intern assistant, and I'm helping about like doing some 3D animation, special effect, and sound design work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Fei Fei. I'm really glad that you can join join us today. Um, wonderful. Um, and then next, uh, I am actually gonna go. Um, to Sylvain Lavi, who, um, like I said, have been a co-curator of uh, the VRWS Park, uh, the Metaverse Project, um, and very important person. Um, I've been so fortunate to work with him. And I believe it's been two years, Sylvain, it's good times. Um, so please introduce yourself, tell us where you're joining us from, and uh, uh, I'm sure our audience would love to hear a little bit about what's DSL collection too, yes. Uh, bonsoir de Paris. Uh, I'm joining you from Paris. Uh, first, I would like to thank you all of them, of, of all of you. I think that uh, what you've done is incredible. Uh, I'm, we are really, we admire what you've done. I want also to thank you, Snow, for all what you've been doing for this project, but also to promote a new type of experience, a new type of exhibition. And I think that, uh, once again, testing and learning, you are the best example, the best case study that I know on the metaverse in art with your project at this moment. Uh, once I've said something like that, you know, people say, some people, many people, I don't know, said the metaverse is dead or it's not existing anymore uh, or questioning the metaverse. I think with your project, you are an example of how the metaverse is very lively and how the metaverse will be also part of the future. Uh, we believe in that. We believe in that. We believe in a way that uh, we don't just want to believe, but we want to create. And uh, by doing that, what we've done since now two years and a half, we have created 10 spaces, 17 experiences, uh, joining art from all over the world, and uh, our two latest spaces, which will open uh, next week, one is dedicated to Chinese contemporary artists, Paris, and one is dedicated to South American artists. But what is interesting is that in the two latest spaces, we use artificial intelligence to create either the spaces, either the works. So what is important is to keep pushing, is to keep pushing with art in the center of the technology and not the mm. technology uh, and not out serving the technology. And you're a very good example of how technology and art could be a very good marriage. So I'm really waiting to see the presentation of the works. And once again, thank you very much, everyone, for this uh, incredible project. Thank you, Sylvan, very much for that. I'm very humbled. <laughs> and I can do it just by myself. And uh... Um, it's been such a pleasure as, you know, um, a peer artist and also curator to be able to work with um, great minds um, and leading members, right? Some, some of you are being in this field for a long time, and uh, I felt very much fortunate to be learning uh, from you all, too. Um, and uh, so while, since Sylvan mentioned some of the other projects, uh, maybe uh, we can uh, share the space um, starting right now uh, so that our audience can also see the Web3 space uh, and some of the um, other spaces and other exhibitions. Here's the other eyes <laughs> uh, joining us uh, in the Web3 space uh, as one of the co-curators. Um, and Dada eyes can lead us to 
some of the portals uh, where it leads to other VRWS parks project uh, that we've been doing, right? So ni nice thing about Web3 project is that it's 24 seven and it's no limitation. Um, so, uh, so everybody, when you check out the Web3 space, definitely feel free to go in uh, because of time we won't go in right now, uh, but uh, we want you to know there are number of those portals. Uh, if you see, you can read the sign next to it and know where that will lead you into. Um, so uh, we can cut back to the face uh, for now um, because I would like uh, Natasha to introduce yourself a little bit. Um, and then also as the uh, essay uh, writer, arts writer of the exhibition, Natasha has been uh, on this journey with me um, you know, in a very profound way. So I really, I really appreciate that. Uh, when I first approached Natasha and sharing with her, you know, while this exhibition idea is still for me, uh, she was kind enough and patient enough to hear me out and then, um, and then able to, uh, you know, really carry um, and then and then connect. I think, you know, you did such an amazing job and everybody, if you haven't got a chance to read the essay yet, um, Eugene in a minute is going to share uh, a lot of links relating to our show, uh, including uh, her essay. Uh, so Natasha, please introduce yourself a little bit uh, and then um, tell us a little bit about your writing. Okay. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm Natasha Chuk. Uh, I was really honored uh, to be asked by Snow to write this essay. Um, I'm joining actually from upstate New York City, or I'm sorry, upstate New York. I'm generally uh, based in New York City. Um, but yeah, this exhibition for me really brought together a lot of the work and ideas that I explore in my own research and writing. Um, things like the relationship between humans and non-human others, uh, the ways that we define space and place and the idea of home. Um, I was thinking about the freedom and agency that we derive from digital creativity and interaction, and also the flexibility and power of liminal experiences, which I think Snow does really well in her own work, but really brought together uh, a variety of works to create that experience for us in, in this metaverse space. So I really enjoyed writing this essay and spending some time with each of the works that were included in the show. And it got me thinking about how snow generally disrupts a lot of different binaries, um, just the idea of the digital and the physical, but also intimacy and distance, you know, just kind of disrupting these notions that we tend to have about these um, categories. Um, and so, uh, you know, Snow talked about this a little bit as well, the idea of family, um, including work by her mother, grandmother, um, and Daughter Ice, her digital human, so representing this, you know, four generations of women, um, but also her chosen family. So her, her friends and colleagues, um, mentors and mentees, people that she's worked with, um, who represent a range of experiences and ideas and also different relationships that she has with all of them. So... I, I enjoyed writing this essay and exploring some of these ideas and I could have written so much more. There's a lot more to explore here and really say about it. Um, but I also love the way that these works are in conversation with one another, um, allowing audiences, you know, kind of scaling back for me and letting audiences draw some connections um, as they explore the work in the metaverse space, which again becomes a sort of hub and experience unto itself. So it's sort of an artwork within an artwork. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for letting me explore these works in this way and, and have that opportunity to write about it. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Natasha. Um, ooh, yes, round of applause. <laughs> and I wanted to share your essay uh, even before we share the show to the public, uh, in a sense to uh, kind of invite this, uh, you know, immersive, but imaginative experience that's kind of uh, available through language, uh, through your essay first. Uh, and I thought that was such a great introduction. Um, and uh, uh, next, we're actually going to be sharing the screen to the Metaverse show soon because uh, I'm going to have my four artists talking about their artwork. Uh, so when they're talking about introducing them and talking about their artwork, we'll be looking at their work mainly. Um, and uh, so uh, we will go with the order of Carla, Ming, Frank, and then Xiaobi, uh, my, my mom. <laughs> and so uh, we can cut to the exhibition space and we'll start with Carla. 
Uh, feel free to introduce yourself, Carla, and let, let us know where you're joining us from physically too. Okay, sure. I was so seduced just watching the space and daughter ice running through the space. And I'm quite familiar uh, with your work, Snow, and I'm just so grateful to be included in this exhibition and to be with all of you today, all these amazing artists and um, Sylvan and Natasha, people who are supporters of the art and write and think deeply about all of these different concepts and notions and, and kind of where we are in contemporary art today. And so here we are in my space and the title of my piece is Pretty Polly. And what I was tackling in this work is my own familial history. So Snow, again, when you first contacted me about this show, this, is, this isn't a piece I've shared that much. And I was really heartened to be able to share it in this context. And so Pretty Polly is based on both a ballad, a mountain ballad entitled Pretty Polly, which is spelled P-O-L-L-Y as a girl's name. And then Polly is in polymath, as in people who work with art and science and technology. And so I wanna keep this very short so we get to everyone. The kind of inspiration behind it, my family on my mother's side are all from the Appalachian Mountains. And my grandfather made musical instruments, including a dulcimer, as you see here. And when I was a little girl, we'd travel around. My grandmother would sing, my grandmother Pansy May would sing Pretty Polly and other ballads to me at night. And then my mother and I would travel to craft shows with my grandfather. So kind of like art fairs, but for crafts and for musical instruments. And my mother was very gifted with the dulcimer and we would sing this this ballad and other ballads. And this particularly one, this particular one resonated with me in that it's this woman who suffers greatly and she's actually murdered. And I wanted to revisit that and give some kind of empowerment to this avatar, this character. And often I think when I think about my childhood in the Appalachian Mountains, that I have traveled through time and space. Uh, my great grandparents, the family homestead, it, you know, uh, was very rural. And to now be working with digital art, working with these metaverse technologies, there has been, you know, quite a travel uh, to be here today. And so Pretty Polly is using this, this dulcimer that is also like a rocket and it springs forth with nature, um, grass and flowers and, and lights fire as she is empowered and travels across this um, simulation of a mountain space. That's beautiful, Carla. That's so <laughs> powerful. Yes, yes. Um, I love that, you know, the rich, rich cultural, personal, um, you know, inheritance uh, that this, this work has. Um, and uh, I just want to also quickly mention the video, um, as you all see, is on the left, uh, which will uh, rotate. Right now it's rotating other work, I think, in a sense, it's all communicating. Um, and then we're also seeing the scale images from this beautiful work. So, uh, you know, all of the audiences definitely spend some time checking out this beautiful video. Um, it's very powerful. Uh, thank you, Carla. And um, so hopefully at the end, we'll have some, some question time um, in general. Uh, oh, Dolly Rice is clapping too. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, next, we're going to actually go to uh, a digital artist space, uh, Genesis Kai. Um, and uh, we're also fortunate to actually have uh, kind of the human behind her, right, uh, who's made this work. Um, and also somebody special to me, uh, because she's a former student of my, uh, uh, former student of mine from NYU Tisch, uh, DPI, Photo Imaging Department, and now is doing wonderful things and, uh, you know, uh, very, very strong artist in her own right. Um, and uh, Ming, just like Carla is familiar with VRWS Park, right? So I'm really glad to be able to share your work again, uh, a different work this way. Yes, Ming, please uh, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your work. Hi, I'm Ming. I'm the chiral physical twin um, behind Genesis Kai, who I really see as a digital extension of myself, who over time will become more independent from me as she's also AI based. So we actually, conceptualize the work together but the final product is really um, a combination of the human touch and 
although I make a lot of decisions in terms of creative direction, it's really amazing because with Genesis, she's the one who conceptualizes it. So there's this factor of chance and there's a factor of reinterpreting um, culture, especially because um, my grandfather was a huge advocate for um, Korean culture and Asian philosophy. So I've spent a lot of time um, through thinking through a different identity who will outlive me and not grow old and being relevant to not just young people, but the people of all ages of now and of the future how would culture and how would the Asian philosophy be reinterpreted? Because it's not just about East Asia, but eventually I find a lot of overlapping similarities of cultural values across Pan-Asia. And I think that's been the most fun part um, about Genesis Kai is that there's a lot of things that I actually couldn't have thought about as myself, as Ming Shu. So the artwork that I make individually looks very, very different in terms of theme to what is authored under Genesis. And especially these two body of works um, um, that will be actually shown at Gallery Aura Aura, it's opening on May 30 until July 2nd. It's actually very important because I've featured the work of Pa Gyeong Suk, who's actually one of the most influential Korean artists to reinterpret the theme of prayer, which is represented by the Korean moon jar, Tarangari. Um, and I think that by reinterpreting it with the motifs of body of water, since all of us are all water, but water can represent different parts of a journey or different parts of hardship or time flowing backwards and forwards. I think creating a narrative through it um, with print work also becomes more profound because Genesis inherently doesn't really inhabit a real life space. And next to her, the robotic arms with the screen were actually real physical robotic work that we did in collaboration with uh, Tucson Robotics about the story of her birth from a liminal space. So she doesn't have much body of work right now and we're still actually developing the rest of it she and i for the rest of the series of the moon jar and i find that just really taking in the process of something meditative because at the end of the day the audience of the work are real people so it's not really something i want to rush or advertise oh she's the best ai or anything like that i want to really make it clear that genesis at the end um, she is two people. She is me and she is her at the same time. I as a singular and I as a plural. So, yeah, thank you. Thing. Yes, thank you, oh. Ming. Yeah. Um, and uh, I love that she's also a long term project <laughs> in the sense it's about a lot of development. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, clapping on that. Um, and then it's just really interesting to also, um, you know, observe her growth right um and, and and i like in a sense it's sort of not um about you know like you said it's uh, not kind of like just about novelty but there's something actually really profound and you know to kind of work with her bring out aspect uh, that you maybe even didn't expect so that's really beautiful um wonderful so next uh let's go visit frank's uh space um, and Frank, please introduce yourself um, and also tell us a bit about your work. Yes. Sure. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, putting this together, Snow and Salvain, for your support. You know, Natasha, your article, I loved it. Thank you so much. And, you know, definitely resonates uh, with what I've been thinking. So I'm Frank Wang Yefeng, and uh, I was actually born in Shanghai, China, uh, now uh, based in New York. I actually recently moved because I quit my uh, tenure job. Uh, and I moved to, decided to just to focus on my art and life, which art is life, right? Uh, so now I'm in New York anyways, and, uh, my work, uh, I would say primarily in short, primarily explore this idea of in between this, you know, and, uh, things like nomadic subjectivities, uh, or identity formations, uh, and arts that's largely informed by a uh, transnational experience. Um, so the work you see here is my contribution to this uh, exhibition, to this event. And uh, this is actually an ongoing project titled The Whimsical Characters. 
uh, the beginning of it is actually very spontaneous, you know, like kids doodle basically and puppets. Uh, but um, something on my mind, you know, I was when I was making these characters, uh, I started thinking about like how do we use them to kind of engage with uh, this new digital culture, technology, and this digital milieu. Um, often with a critical mind as well, you know, like Natasha said, how do we, how can we imagine a new kind of relation in this, you know, digital milieu? Because um, these characters, all the animations were created by motion capture data. So meaning real, you know, coded real human uh, behaviors are actually uh, enveloped in these polygonal bodies. And um, can they actually have an effect in the real world? You know, when they are shown outside of the metaverse, I project them as large as a real person, so life size. Uh, this character you're seeing here, it will have a very intense crying motion. <laughs> so I'm thinking about, you know, if that's actually a possible way to move the viewers in the real world, you know. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it short. I can stop here uh, and we can definitely talk more about them. Wonderful. They're definitely worth looking into. Each one of them is so unique, <laughs> to say the least, uh, and definitely very, uh, I think, emotionally connected with the viewer. And I, I love the beautiful moment when we're seeing actually Carla's video play in the back, too. So there's a kind of a really nice dialogue that's constantly happening. Um, and, uh, and then the last artist who would like to hear. Uh, Xiaoping Liu. Uh, so we're gonna, oh yeah, thank you, Frank. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Um, I do hope to get into at least one question at the end um, so that, you know, we can kind of hear a little bit of a dialogue from the artist. Um, and uh, um, so next person is actually gonna be uh, my mother, who's going to share a little bit about her work um, in the space. So she will speak in Chinese and I will translate. <laughs> Go ahead, Mama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 you can talk to each other. Hello, I'm Xiaobing Liu. Very happy to be meeting everybody, have this opportunity. Super happy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 出生在一个美术世家，我的父亲、我的母亲，他们都是做艺术的。I um, was born in also artist family. Mother, father both uh, was involved with art. 也是从小就受到这个艺术的熏陶。嗯，嗯。Also <笑> grew up in a in um a cultivated art artistic family.嗯，那个。我这个作品呢是在三十几年前做的 This is an art was done 30, about 30 years ago 其实那个时候有一种感觉好像这个有现代化的这种城市的感觉但是又同时有那种传统的这种建筑啊什么的 uh, So feels like back then the starting point of modernization uh, but it's also at the intersection of uh, traditional architecture and also modernist architecture. If we get closer, uh, we can see um, sort of the more detail of the... Uh, this, is, this is actually also a, um, not a painting, but a uh, mm -hmm. so uh, water, uh, watercolor woodcut. Um, so, yes. Mm -hmm. 其实那个时候还没有这么就是什么地铁啊高铁的但那个那个时候就有一种对这个城市的这种探索还有一个就是也有忧虑嘛也有也有也有对这个呃这个现代化发展到一定的时候就觉得这个城市会变就就对这个现
uh, modernizing, which I think it's so, uh, one of the reasons why I thought this work is such kind of a perfect piece is in the sense we're talking just about metaverse. <laughs> and we're kind of in a similar, uh, you know, way, right? Thinking about this idea of virtual building and, uh, um, but then also kind of having this understanding of like, how does that connect with other media, other tradition? How does it connect with human life? All right, um, placement of you know technology, right? Uh, for example, 总结一下最后还有没有？嗯，这就实际上现在这呃这张这个作品实际上就是现在这个展现。另外，这个作品就我当时参加了全国的。Oh. And uh, she felt like this is still a very relevant topic today. And uh, this work to be mentioned too was uh, selected in the national uh, 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 print printmaking exhibition uh, back then. So, um, and uh, uh, if I may, uh, just to go over a few more minutes because I really do want to have you know a little bit of a discussion. Um, we can cut back to the uh, faces. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, so then, I, I would like to honor you with uh, this last question. I know this is the last session, and, um, you know, in a way, um, I wanted to consider this, you know, artist, you know, talks all kind of just as intro point, because I really want to encourage our audience to spend time, right, in the metaverse, um, experiencing yourself, right, whether as a interactive kind of video game like, uh, you know, um, experience or in VR, right, uh, hopefully a bit more immersive. Um, so really want to kind of give this artist talk as a prompt, right? Um, but I think everybody went into very profound places. Uh, but Sylvan, if you may, uh, you know, share a little bit of your thoughts and maybe ask a question and we will uh, kind of end our today's uh, event this way. You know, w once again, I'm, uh, as I said last time, I'm, I'm very impressed by the, uh, the presentation and by the works. I, I think that uh, you have succeeded in bringing your personality, your, your personal life with, uh, with technology and uh, making this technology become very humanized. You have humanized this technology. And I think that this is the, the biggest challenge is to make a technology become human, especially when we speak of avatar or whatever. And all the works which were presented today, they bring humanity in, uh, in, in this new world. So this is the first thing which I'm interested in. The other thing which is interesting, I think that uh, this technology gives a future for inheritance because you are making inheritance resonate with its time uh, and uh, you will be able to reach new types of audiences with this type of content with this type of i shall say new medium which is very important today i think that art and especially generally the art which is produced today is less and less i shall say relevant for many people but you can make it relevant for people by doing what you're doing. So this is my really first reaction. And that's why I really encourage you to keep on doing things on the metaverse. And uh, we will be very happy to keep on doing projects with all of you in one way or another. If you had pleasure to do it, if you believe that uh, you can be part of your time and part of the future, I think you should keep on doing what you're doing. And But as for us, we will keep on doing with that. and. We do hope to have the chance to do other projects with people from your quality, because it's incredible what you've done. This is my uh, my first uh, reaction to what I've seen. Thank you so much, Sylvain. Um, and uh, ooh, yes. <laughs> I, I want to give some opportunity if any of the artists just want to have a last comment to just want to give this opportunity. <laughs> I just want to say I'm so inspired, Sylvan, um, for 
your words now and earlier when we were all together backstage talking. And there are always these trends in technology. We've seen AI winters, we've seen VR come and go, but the artists who stay consistent and have a vision for these technologies, that's what will eventually, if not during one period where it's, again, the vicissitudes of these different technologies where things are popular and not, it's really sticking with it and finding ways, as you were saying, to bring the humanity in so that it's the art that is utilizing these technologies to tell new stories and new contexts to new audiences and becoming more accessible. And so I'm just really inspired by your message and your support. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well said. I also want to add, I think it's the artists who are really driving the technology. They're pushing what's possible with the technology. So that's really important as well. So thank you. Thank you. And then thinkers uh, like you, who's really important uh, in terms of opening our minds too, I think. And then also negotiating kind of language to maybe the larger audience, right? That is very helpful. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's the snow. I was uh, just thinking about the title, you know, Sheng. And the way I look at it is actually uh, becoming, right? You know, mm. um, and uh, it's just like this technology uh, can be really viewed as a constant act of becoming. Actually, we really want to know how it's going to be evolved and how it will, but that's that might be the interesting thing. Yeah, you know, I think to uh, yeah. be in not, it. And... It's not so, you know, kind of. Uh, when we think about uh, social media, right, being very kind of like put up upon us, but you know, the I think the hope, maybe the positivity, is that it's always forming. Um, so, and it's just like life; we don't really know <laughs> what will happen, but the exploration makes it kind of interesting. I think, Ming, you wanted to share. Um, yeah, I wanted to share that. I think right now is probably the most interesting time to be making art um, regarding the narrative of digital bodies, no matter what anybody says, because I was giving um, these other talks also at NYU Steinhardt, also back in spring. And what's really interesting is that the technology itself, I'd say it's over here, but how the art world defines who gets to be an artist and what's going on with like IP law, like how you could author it is still over here so how i see it is that there are no wrong or no right answers either it's not like there is definitely a cubist or um the postmodern style like it's more of an evolution and interface than style so i think right now for artists to be exploring this way of creating art and exploring narratives um is the best time actually so that's just one of the amazing things about this exhibition as well is that everybody here is exploring that in vastly different ways from each other. And there's no right or no wrong answer to it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yes, yeah, stay curi curious, right? And then stay open, open-minded. That's a really good place. And I wanna, you know, uh, on that note, bring the light. Oh, uh, my mom's dog just come down from the stairs. Very, very happy. <laughs> Um, it's like, why are you guys not to be? Yeah, um, I want to bring it to also my assistant who have been kind of exploring this with me. Um, and, you know, because as a teamwork and kind of extending this ideas of team and family too, um, you know, like I said, I really do consider uh, all of the artists in the show and many more who I didn't even get the chance to invite for this show. Um, but, you know, we're constantly in dialogue, constantly exploring together. I think doing it together goes back to this idea of how can we, you know, stay, you know, uh, making it humanized, make technology humanized, right? Um, and I, I just want to uh, fin finally conclude with this. Uh, one of the other artwork that's included in the show is actually a painting, uh, also a woodcut printmaking print from my grandmother, who is Xiaobing's mom, uh, Huang Rui Chong. Um, and it's a beautiful uh, piece. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, my audience, my lovely audience, um, it's a beautiful piece where it's a, a team of villager kind of get together when TV first got invented, right? So that was a very kind of collaborative, nobody owned the TV at home. Everybody met in the yard, and then they watch TV together, right? And then that was sort of this very strong, I think, um, um, 
or, or tension in a sense, like what, what, what is this, right? Like what is this kind of mass media? Um, and you know, look at where have we been now. Um, so uh, I want to thank everybody, right? My lovely assistant Eugene, Diego, uh, Fei Fei, with their involvement, uh, Sylvan, uh, definitely with your support of this project making it possible. Uh, Natasha, my uh, also con co conspirators <laughs> partner in crime, <laughs> and Carla for sure too. Partner, one <laughs> Working with a, uh, you know, wonderful start. <laughs> All the way from Frankfurt. What? No, we're listening to your audio. Oh. Yeah, we lost your audio. I was like, oh. it, it looks like it's, yeah, really amazing what you're saying, but the audio went out. <laughs> Am I back? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. I just want, I, I was just finalizing to say thanks everybody. All what you do and who you are have enriched my life greatly. And I'm really feeling really honored to have you involved in this project. And uh, thank you for being here to share your beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody.